All right, guys, so welcome to Writing Week. Everyone needs to take out their notes that I gave you yesterday. Friendly reminder, you do have a vocab quiz on Monday. Please take out your long essay questions, period one and two long essay questions. It looks just like this. These are the prompts that we're going to be looking at today. Uh, and this is what you'll be writing off of this weekend. Okay. So you need a couple of things on your desk. You need paper. I write on, uh, on computer paper because it's easier for me. I would write on white line paper for you. Every essay you write needs to be on a separate sheet of paper. Does that make sense? So you have two essays due to me on Monday. How many sheets of paper should you write them on? Two. Two. There you go. Now, for today, because um, the essay prompts we're going to use are on this sheet of paper, you're going to need a planning sheet. So really for today, to be successful for this week, today and this weekend, you need three sheets of paper. Each one? No, not each one, just for today. So each essay needs to be on its own separate sheet of paper for the rest of your AP World Life. Uh, because it's on this sheet of paper, we're going to plan on a separate sheet of paper. However, on your short answer questions, we'll plan on those prompts directly, stuff like that. All right, so everyone in front of you should have a couple sheets of paper. Everyone should have your LEQs, which look like this. And everyone should have their period one notes and two notes. Now, if you take this out real quick, um, this is actually like a nice little gift for you. Um, this is essentially, if you had to boil down period one and two, this is it. This is the absolute reduction of everything we've covered in the last seven weeks. Okay, so it is there to help you kind of see things in a bigger connection. It is there as a reference. Um, if I have time, I'll probably talk about it a little bit. Uh, but it is there for helping you reference. If you follow through, it's actually really pretty great. So you're welcome. It only took me about four hours to make. You know. So that's for you. Please reference it this week. So LEQ is where we're going to start. LEQ means long essay question. On your AP exam, you have one long essay question, but you have two options. Okay, so on your AP World exam on May 17th, you have to write one long essay question, but you have two chomps, uh, two chomps, that's fine, two prompts to choose from, which is nice. So you get to kind of control your destiny to a degree. Um, in the end, it is a good thing for you. All right, so when we talk about long essay questions, okay, they are, the foundations of them are right here. You need to write a thesis. Who can raise your hand and tell me what a thesis is? Oh, God, guys. What is a thesis? Uh, Amari, what's a thesis? Yeah, it's telling you exactly what you're going to be discussing in the entire essay. Okay? Then you have your contextualization. <laughs> contextualization is what is happening in the world at that time. Okay? Then you have to develop your argument. Then you're going to provide evidence, two pieces of evidence, okay? And then you have to have your synthesis. Guess what's the hardest part? The synthesis. This is the hardest part. You need to be making connections between the arguments. It's all about making connections, okay? You can connect it to another region, which is my favorite another era, another conflict, another aspect. This is what you are going to struggle with until about a month before your AP exam. And then it's going to click, just like the primary sources. Okay? You're going to get struggle with this, but we'll get there. Okay? Now, LEQs have the largest varying topics. You can have a long essay question that is cause and effect, which have stems that look like what is the cause of the effect, uh, what's the cause of the event, what's the effect, present an argument, defend. You can have one that's compare contrast, which we've already seen, right? We looked at the Roman and the Hans already. How similar, how different, all right? Then you have a new one, which you haven't seen. It's called a CCOT, or continuity and changes over time. That looks at the entire period. So, all of period two, 
What is something that stayed the same? What is something that changed during all of period two? Which one do you think is harder, the continuity or the change? Continuity is the hardest. Whoa. It is by far the hardest. Okay? So, this one is the one you definitely don't want on AP Day. <laughs> but guess what we're going to do? We're going to practice the hell out of it because we need to. So, CCRTs are the worst. They are the hardest by far. So we're going to practice that skill the most because they haven't had a CCOT LEQ in about two years. So guess what's due? Oh, CCOT. So if I had to put money down, I'm assuming it's a CCOT on your LEQ this year, friends. So we're going to crush it. So you will notice that I have compare contrast sample essays. You will notice I have some periodization, cause and effect, and some continuity ones. So guess what we'll be doing this week? A little of it all. How exciting! What a time to be alive. So, which one do you want to start with? Cause and effect, compare and contrast, CCOT, CCOT. or per oh, periodization, by the way. Periodization is you're talking about a major event and how did that affect that period. So, like, for instance, in period two, what is a major event that's going to change everything about period two? What's a major event? What is the name of a dude who is going to change everything? In period two. Yannick? Oh, shit, no. Jesus really doesn't have that big... I guess you could argue Jesus, but, like... Jesus doesn't really... Like, there's no real, like, Jesus stuff until, like, three. That's when it really, like, hardcore Jesus happens. What do you got, Ayla? Ah, we could do better. Guys, who is going to affect empires all over the damn place? Mia. Alexander the Great. Alexander the Great is a great periodization, correct? He's going to screw... Mess up the Greeks, he's going to mess up the Persians, he's going to mess up the Indians, right? He's going to invade, do all that stuff. That's a great piece. So you would talk about what led to the rise of Alexander the Great, which is what? What war is going to lead to the rise? Peloponnesian War, right? And the impact of it is you're going to have the conquering of all these empires, and what's the impact of it? That's what periodization is. It's a little tricky, it's big picture. Are we enjoying these essays already? All right. So, should we start in continuity? Uh, uh, which one do you want first? Compare and contrast? CCOT. 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 No, we want to All right, here we go. I know. Let's start easy. Actually, I want to do a compare. Let's start easy. Let's. I want to hold your hand. Let's go. Oh, you people are not ready. All right, here we go. So, uh, do you want to do number one? Uh, compare and contrast basic features of civilization in any of the three, or do you want to compare the technical contributions of China, India, and Mediterranean? One or two? You want the first one? Perfect. So we're going to do, this is number one. This is number two. Guess what you're doing for homework? I would write homework next to number two, please. That is what you are writing this weekend. I think you're going to want my help planning. Can we agree? So we got to move then. All right, here we go. So let's look at question number one is what we are doing in class. <laughs> now, what I complete in class is exactly what you should be looking at while you are working this weekend. The essay I'm about to write with you and plan with you is what you should have on your desk when you start writing yours. Does that make sense? You're going to mimic what I'm doing. Okay, here we go. So compare and contrast the basic features of civilization of any two of the three civilizations listed below. So compare and contrast the basic features. What do you think they mean by basic features? What do, you, they, what do they mean, Nathan? Government and economy. Government, economy. What else can you use? Nick, uh, Nick, what is wrong with me? Ricky. Social hierarchy. Social, social. Guys, what is this really looking at? Spice. It's your spice. Hi, aren't we glad it's all coming back? Full circle, friends. So, which ones do you want to do? You're only comparing two of the three. Which one do you know? So when you are making a choice, when you are given options, you need to pick the one that you know the most evidence about. <coughs> what can you spew a bunch of crap about? What I mean is, what facts can you recall really quickly? So, either cross one off right away or pick one. What would you think is the easiest one to pick? Uh, Rex. You think? Yeah. All, right. All right, let's do it. Mesopotamia and Egypt? Perfect. I would have picked the Shang, but that's fine. All right, here we go. So, we are going to compare. So, when you do it, you're going to write Meso, you're going to write Egypt, 
Okay, you're gonna draw a nice little line and then you're gonna box it off and these are your similarities. Okay, so compare and contrast the basic features of any two of the three of the following civilization. You need to have two differences and one similarity or, or you can have two similarities and one difference. You need to have differences and a similarity. There needs to be a grand total of how many? Five. Three. three. You need to have a grand total of three. Now, if you are going to pick a political for Mezzo, you have to pick a po political for Egypt because you have to make direct comparisons. Is everyone clear on that? Okay, so what is a unique feature of Mesopotamia, Egypt, or a similarity? What do we got? All right, uh, Wyatt. Well, for a difference, you said Mesopotamia built with cigarettes and infrastructure in Egypt built pyramids. Cigarettes, and we got pyramids. Okay, so next one we're going to write. So is this, what are you arguing? What spice theme? Political? Uh, interactions? Interactions, yeah, interactions. Okay. How, how are you going to defend it? I would do cultural. I would do cultural. Okay? And what does ziggurats exemplify culturally? What do they exemplify culturally? What do you got, Ricky? Okay, religion, yes. Okay, religion, but we need a little bit more than that. What are, what about their religion that we can cite? Uh, Ayla? Are their gods kind or harsh? God's harsh. There you go. Perfect. Gods are harsh. Pyramids. It's cultural. Okay. What do we know about them? It's also religious. Okay. All right. But what uh, What about them? What do we got? Cheyenne. Okay. It's for the pharaohs. Perfect. For the pharaohs uh, to heaven. Got it. All right. Now that seems like a Pretty damn good similarity as well, but that's another story for another day. All right, what else we got? Hello, what's some differences here? Guys, the faster you help me plan, the faster I write, which means I help you write your homework. Uh, Alejandra. The Nile River is for Tutankhamun. I don't know if that's the difference. The Nile River is predictable, and the Tigris and the Euphrates are unpredictable. Nile, predictable. Tigris. Euphrates. Uh, unpredictable. Okay, let's get some similarities here. What do you got for similarities? What do you got, Nathan? Were they both bureaucracies in early Egypt? Egypt was run by like the government. Egypt is a theocracy. So we'll throw that up there. Theocracy, because that's a good one. And that's political, of course. Okay, that's an interactions. Okay, that's an interactions. All right, what are some similarities, though? Oh, God, guys, the faster we move, the more I write, the less you have tonight uh, by yourself. Potter. They both have polytheistic religions. Polytheistic religions. Polytheistic. Okay. And that's a cultural. Uh, what could you use as some evidence for their polytheism? Because you need some evidence. What are you going to say? What, do you, what is a religious text of... Exactly. Guys, yeah, religious text is a great answer. Guess what? You have no evidence, so it's wasted. It, you can't use it. There's no point in writing it down. So no. Okay, so polytheistic, fine, but we have no evidence, so guess what? What do you got, Savannah? Well, can't you write about, like, the zero cells on the ego? It's not just one. You can't use the same thing over and over again, because that's not how it works, but you could put your pyramids here. Ziggurats and pyramids. So, why don't we cross them off from up here, because we clearly need some, uh, Similarity, does that make sense? Okay, all right, well we need, give me one other similarity we got. What do they both have that's unique that we could cite evidence for? Writing systems, yes! And what is gonna be your evidence? What is your evidence? Oh, I was writing writing evidence. Writing systems, yes. All right, what do you got, uh, Mia? Um, cuneiform and hieroglyphics. Cuneiform, hieroglyphics. Okay, and what are, what's another piece of evidence you can write for cuneiform? Where do we see cuneiform? Give me a text. Hammurabi's code. Uh, Hammurabi's code, absolutely. Hammurabi's code. Okay, hieroglyphics, what could we cite? Tristan. Okay, uh, inside, can we get, does anyone know a specific 
How you can write inside the Great Pyramid of Giza. Yeah. Inside the Great Pyramid of Giza. Of Giza, whatever it is. All right. Here we go. All right. So looking at it, looking back at our compare contrast, because we need at least one or uh, one difference and two similarities or two similarities and one difference. Okay. So looking back, which ones are going to be easier to argue? Should we do two similarities or two differences? Two similarities. So we're going to do these two, okay? Now, when we're looking at it, do we really, we can compare our rivers, that's fine. Is that what we want? Or do you think it would be, we can do that, that's fine. All right, here we go. All right, take out your notebook paper. Everyone should have their planned essays out in front of them. So, here we go. So, during... Period. Do you want an impact? Oh, I don't care. During period one. Mesopotamia. And Egypt. Were similar. We're similar due to the fact they both had writing systems and used polytheism, used a polytheistic, sorry, Use a polytheistic religion. While they differed in both region and consistency of their rivers. There you go. What did I just write? Thesis. Okay, so. You will notice in my thesis, I am talking about what period of time? Period one, okay? I know that Mesopotamia, Shang, and Egypt are in period one, okay? As we get going, we'll start seeing that the questions will phrase it, but um, I have now addressed my two regions that I'm identifying, correct? Mesopotamia and Egypt. I'm listing how they're similar and how they differ. Is everyone clear on that? Very understandable, okay? Now I need to write contextualization. Contextualization is what is happening in the world during period one. So, who can tell me what is happening in the world during period one? What are we doing, Matthew? Uh, civilization is so early in the world. And it's so early in the structure. During the, uh, the time period of 10,000... BCE to 600 BCE. That just happens to be the day range of period one, which we'll get to later. Um, for the first time, regions all around the world are state building. forming governments and growing their military for the first time. In history. Okay, so this is your thesis. I'm just labeling it so if people are watching my video. This is your thesis all the way down to here. Is everyone clear on that? Then I switch to contextualization, which is from here to here. And all contextualization is, ladies and gentlemen, is uh, you telling what is happening in the world in a bigger scale. That's all you're doing. You don't have to label that extra stuff. That's totally fine. I just wanted to label it out. What do you got? Are we, are we able to? 
Can we do it with highlighter? Oh, I don't care if you want to do it. You can do it. You don't have to. Phoebe. What does it say after the uh, For the first time in history. Okay, so that is your first paragraph. It's done. Okay, so when you start your second period, uh, your second paragraph, you are going to restate the prompt. Okay, so during period one, during period one, Mesopotamia, and Egypt were similar due to. The fact they, uh, due to the fact they both had writing systems called cuneiform and hieroglyphics. Okay, so I've restated my prompt. I've made it clear who I'm talking about. And then I've introduced what topics I'm talking about in this paragraph. Does everyone understand how this works? Okay, so now I'm going to assess. Okay, so cuneiform was the first written language in the world and was created. in Mesopotamia. Cuneiform was used to write the epic of Gangladesh. There you go. So, I have introduced my topic so here is my introduction. Cuneiform was the first written language in the world. It was created in Mesopotamia. Cuneiform was used to write the Epic of Ganglamesh. Okay, so hieroglyphics were used in Egypt and are considered a pictorial. language. Hieroglyphics can be seen today inside the Great Pyramid of Giza. Okay, so once again, I introduce my topic. Hieroglyphics were used in Egypt. I'm telling who it connects to and are considered a pictorial language. I'm dropping a fact about it and then I'm providing evidence that I actually know something about it. Is everyone clear on what's happening? Okay. It's very systematic. Would you agree? Okay. Now I have to do my synthesis. Okay. So your synthesis is why is this significant big picture? Why do we care and how does it affect future generations? So, who can tell me why is writing systems a big impact on later parts? What do you got, Jason? We can do better. Uh, what do we got? I've already talked to these people. Annie, help me out. Help me out. What do we got, Emma? All right, all right, we're getting there. Okay. So, writing systems like hieroglyphics and cuneiform will lay the foundation. for future writing systems that will
lead to the centralizing of governments, the increasing, the increase of trade, <coughs> and an add to the complexities of culture. There you go. Okay, so all you do for your synthesis point is connected to a larger thing. So, um, do, 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 do. writing systems like hieroglyphs and cuneiform will lay the foundation for future writing systems that will lead to the centralizing of government, the increase of trade, and uh, add to the complexities of culture. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. You just wrote your first paragraph. That's it. Okay, so now we go to the next one. So we have two similarities, correct? So here we go. During period one. Mesopotamia and Egypt both used polytheistic religions as part of their culture. There you go. Okay, here we go. So, I've reintroduced. So, period one, Mesopotamia, both polytheistic, uh, and use polytheistic religion as part of their culture. So, here we go. In Mesopotamia, in Mesopotamia, their polytheistic religions, their polytheistic was based on emotional slash tumultuous gods because their rivers, their river, their rivers, parentheses, Tigris and Euphrates. Are you looking to make uh, your test? Um, Is that why you're here? Huh? Check it. Yeah, it's on my desk. Um, in Mesopotamia, their polytheistic religion was based on an emotional, emotional slash tumultuous gods because their rivers, Tigris and Euphrates, uh, were unpredictable. To satisfy their gods, they built cigarettes. In their honor. There we go. In Mesopotamia, their polytheistic religion was based on emotional slash tumultuous gods because their rivers, Tigris, Euphrates, were unpredictable to satisfy their gods. They built ziggurats in their honor. Perfect. Okay? Do you see how I restate the prompt, I provide a nice factual information, and then I support it with a piece of evidence? Yes? Here we go. In Egypt, in Egypt, their polytheistic religion was central <coughs> to both religious affairs and in the government. Period. Their theocracy Their theocracy believed their pharaoh <laughs> was a demigod that needed special preparations like the building 
of a pyramid to reach full status God. There you go. Okay, so now what do we have to write next? Synthesis. Synthesis. What do you got? Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, the reason why I brought it up is because their gods are tumultuous. Okay. They uh, in uh, in Mesopotamia the gods aren't very nice. <laughs> They're just killing everyone. Why? Because the river keeps killing people, correct? So, their gods aren't very nice, which is why they do a lot of sacrifices. All right, so, both Mesopotamia and Egypt use their polytheism as part of of state control over its people although Egypt was more effective the governments supported and shape these religions by commissioning public works pro, uh, public work public works to both honor <coughs> their gods and satisfy their people Perfect. Done and done. All right. So I hope that you have seen for every similarity that we're talking about, it gets its own paragraph. Every time you do one, you write a paragraph, you go to the next. What? Oh, sorry. Sorry. I was really excited. Okay. So every time you are addressing, remember, every time you compare and contrast, you need three total comparisons whether it's two similarities and one difference or two differences and one similarity it does not matter okay here we go so now we're doing our differences right is that what we're up to all right here we go during period one it's nice that it's a format you may be tired of writing during period one however it's nice that it's a format can we agree so during period one both, uh, no, I don't want to start with both. Sorry, I'm writing it as I'm sitting here, okay? So stop your judgment, okay? There's no printed one up here. It's not like I'm copying something. During period one, okay, don't be mad. Both Mesopotamia. I couldn't come up with anything else. Both Mesopotamia and Egypt were built along rivers. However, their, uh, their rivers drastically affected how that government, how that civilization Uh, succeeded. Okay, that's not how you spell succeeded, but that's fine. Okay. Egypt. I have to add a little clarity to that one because it's not that great. Egypt and Mesopotamia's rivers caused huge gaps in their wealth. Power and infrastructure. Although both 
both rivers were necessary. The Nile for Egypt brought both wealth and prosperity, while the Tigris and Euphrates with its unpredictability brought death and flooding. There we go. I actually turned out pretty good. Okay, okay. All right, what am I up to now? Synthesis. Synthesis. There you go. So, The predictabilities, ability of rivers, the, predict the predictability of rivers dictate a society's power and wealth. In other regions, with unpredictable rivers like that of Mesopotamia is the Yellow River where even more destruction caused more strain on their governments and its people. Yellow River where and its people. Yellow River where more destruction caused more strain on people on governments and its people. There you go. Alright, that's it. That's it. That's the whole essay right there. You do you need a conclusion? No. You don't need a conclusion. Okay? So, how a total essay goes. Fun fact, it goes thesis, contextualization. So, this is your paragraph number 1. Paragraph number 1, it goes thesis then contextualization. Paragraph number two, three, and four. It goes intro, provide facts, <coughs> evidence, synthesis. There you go. And you do that how many times? three times. So, there you go. So you do your introduction, your provide your facts, your evidence, then your synthesis. And you do that three times. That's how you write a compare contrast essay. How does that feel? Good. Are we having fun yet? Yeah. What do you got, Phoebe? I didn't finish. Yes, you can. All right, how about I try planning your next essay? Yes. Yeah. All right, let's do it. Hi, what? Um, Hi, sweetie. I have 25 kids now. What should I you can wait until that bell rings, but that's fine. But, yeah, no. Compare and contrast the scientific and technical contributions of two of the following regions. So, what are we focusing on? Science. The easiest way to do it is obviously invention. Does that make sense? So, that's the easiest way to think about it. So, compare and contrast scientific inventions of the following. So, we got China, India, and the Mediterranean. Okay, so here we go. You can pick any uh, 600 BC to 600 C. That's period two. So when it says 600 to uh, 600 CE, so what are my period two empires? Han, Chin, Rome, okay, Maoran, Gupta, 
all that crap. Yes? Okay, so here we go. Compare, contrast. So what two empires are we going to pick that we know the most crap about? We can throw down some evidence. What do you got, Nathan? What do you want? The Han and the Oh, oh, oh. You need a different region. So we pick China. China's done. India or Mediterranean? Mediterranean. Mediterranean. So who do you want in the Mediterranean? The Greeks, the Persians, or the Romans? Romans. Romans it is. So we need at least two similarities or... So for each one, come up with two each. Is your sim. Okay, so what are the inventions? The Han, the Romans. Keep in mind, if you're going to do it, you have to have a direct comparison. <laughs> what do we got? Give me something good, Nathan. Faster we move, the more you get. What? Iron. Got iron. And you're going to have to connect it so the iron plow is a great one, which is going to what? Uh, increase so food, right? So iron, we're going to say iron plow, increase food. What else we got? Uh, why? Silkworm. Silkworm, for sure. Silkworms. And what is the impact of it? Trade. Trade. It's going to increase trade, for sure. All right, there you go. You at least got two. So I would think of something like iron and a cultural thing like silk for the Romans. Does that make sense? Huh? They do iron swords. Yeah, they do. All right. Huh? You can't use iron in Rome because iron was created by the... There you go. Goodbye. Are we having fun?